Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. As we give praise and thanks and honor unto the Lord, He is our God, and He is worthy of praise. Oh, my, we have come. This is another time that we come. We, this is our third day in a row. Camp meeting, we concluded on yesterday, and my, didn't we have a time? Oh, praise be to God. Did something vibrantly, and uh, the folks that came, it was just a wonderful celebration. We were able to gather on these grounds to honor our God, to worship Him, and to recognize that we can refocus and reset as we ready ourselves for each and every day that we're facing. Friends, we don't know what this week holds. You may have had a ball this past week, but we don't know what this coming week holds for us. That's why it's so wonderful and so good for us to be found in the presence of the Lord as we allow him to, uh, to have his way, as we give him permission. Our scripture that we have taken in our comeback for 2021 in the preparation for the comeback. Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things. And so we want to enter with the season, a spirit of expectation. What are we expecting this morning? And we can ask our God, God, what are you expecting of us? And uh, then we can seek to measure up into all that God is desiring to do in our lives. And so, as we have been called, if you will, to order, to worship the Lord this morning, and as we think about the goodness of the Lord, as we think about the gift of salvation that has been made available unto you, we can celebrate that. God didn't have to do it. He did not have to love us so much that he sent his only begotten son, but he did it anyway. He did it anyway. And so we spend our time consecrating ourselves. That means setting ourselves aside, not just allowing anything to happen in our lives or in our bodies or in our minds or in our spirits, but we set in order our lives where God can truly be glorified and we join in together. Amen, amen. As we gather this week on the on the grounds, as we gathered, as we came together on uh, on Friday night, recognizing the beginning of our camp meeting and Pastor Steve Nelson as uh, he ministered unto us. Uh, our theme our theme verse was taken from the book of Acts, Acts chapter three, verses nineteen and twenty. Again, in our coming together as we have managed our way thus far through this pandemic season and recognizing and we have chosen not to look at it as just an as interruption, as stay tuned, we have a commercial break, but recognizing that there is so much that has, has taken place and we ready ourselves for whatever is happening and going to happen in our world as we looked at it as a disruption. So rather than sitting back and waiting, well, let's see, let's see what's going to happen. We're preparing ourselves. Devil, give us your best shot. Give us your best shot. Because we heard the word to consecrate ourselves. We're expecting you, devil, to show up, to show up in our finances, to show up in our health. Devil, we're looking for you to show up in our family, but we're ready for you. We read it for you. And so that's the spirit, that's the calling of our time together. And so that text of scripture from Acts chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. Repent then and turn to God, that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come uh, from the Lord, and that he may send you the Messiah, who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Repent. Turn to God. That there may be refreshing. There may be times of refreshing from the Lord. 
sometimes the seasons of our lives, there's very little refreshing. It's almost like a hot summer day, and you get out there in life, and it's like withering, withering. Your life's journey is about withering. There's no cool breeze. But in these summer days, you understand that in the afternoon, many times, the clouds begin to darken, and there comes a refreshing wind, a refreshing breeze to your way. Saints, we want you to understand and to know that we can ready ourselves, that as we repent to the Lord, as we live our lives open unto him and allowing his spirit to move, Lord, have your way. That there may be refreshing in my life, that you can wake up in the morning and say, oh, God, I thank you. There is a spirit and a time of refreshing that's going on. There is a breeze in my life that's going on. That's the refreshing that we're referencing today. Thanks be to God. We're going to ready ourselves for our morning prayer today. And uh, as we give thanks unto the Lord, what the Lord has already begun to do in our lives, as the Lord has already blessed you through the events of this weekend, as we have participated in camp meeting and uh, couldn't hug everybody like we wanted to hug everyone but as the saints assembled themselves in this place and in online, we pray that they'll provide an opportunity for you to be refreshed, that you can be strengthened, that you can be ready for the journey of this week. The needs are great. There are hearts that are heavy throughout our communities on today. There is a continual loss that families have experienced, and, and we know that grief is a process. And so we're praying for those families that are dealing with loss. We pray for just families in general. There's so much that comes against families and so much that families have to deal with and to journey with. But uh, as we lift up and to pray for families, we're just believing that the Lord is going to refresh families. That when families come together in their homes, it's not disruption and it's not... Uh, confusion going on, but there will be a refreshing going on in families. God is giving the body of Christ authority, uh, even as we recognize, as we come against, we, our battle is not against flesh and blood. And so as we set the prayer agenda for our time together today, there are those who are in need of deliverance, there are those who are in need of salvation. There are those who are lost. There are those who have just allowed their lives to be taken over by darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. We come against that today. We set the environment and the attitude for that as we ready ourselves for prayer this morning as we have some music that sets the tone and sets the atmosphere for our coming together in prayer as we position ourselves unto, unto the Lord. And as we go unto him, Understanding that the body of Christ has work to do. We live in a divided society, in a divided world. So many differences that pull us together. It's Jesus Christ that can unite us all. It's Jesus Christ that can unite every situation and every circumstance that goes on in the world today. The divisions that you see many times even at, at the jobs that you work at. Jesus be welcome. Jesus be that reconciler that you can pull together that that needs to be pulled together in lives on today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. And even as uh, we do so, we just want to honor the Lord and you may position yourselves for prayer, whatever that may mean for you this morning. Let's pray again. Father, we honor you today, giving you thanks and praise. You are worthy of praise today, oh God. You are worthy of adoration. We give you thanks and praise, Lord God, for who you are. You are God most high, and we celebrate you, oh God. You are the one who allowed the sun to rise today. And so from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be exalted. So we praise you. We worship you today, Lord God. Your word lets us know that you inhabit the praises of your people, Lord God. And so as we praise you, as we give you thanks today, Lord God, we celebrate who you are, Lord God. And we celebrate, Lord God, what you have done even throughout the ending of this past week, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for this place and 
how your spirit lit up this place, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that we were able to celebrate and to worship you and the word was able to go forth with power and with authority, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the transformation of lives and hearts that took that, that, that taken place, oh God. Thank you for the season of refreshing and the opportunity to reset ourselves. Father, forgive us for always allowing the devil to slip up on us. We thought we had it made, and we put our guards down. The devil came and stole our victory because we didn't even anticipate or expect it. We quit praying. We quit fasting. We quit building ourselves up. We quit spiritual discipline ourselves, and we ended up dry and barren and broken, Lord God. So we ready ourselves, Lord God, even in worship, to understand the importance of worship, oh God. And as you inhabit our praises today, Lord God, we've come to go against the gates of hell and to take back all that hell has stolen away from us, stolen away from our families, stolen away from our hearts, stolen our peace, stolen our joy, oh God. And I thank you that we can refocus ourselves on today, oh God. And we bless your name today, Lord God, as we worship you, Lord God. Thank you for being concerned, Lord God, about every life. Thank you for being so concerned about those who are in grief and mourning that you sent your Holy Spirit, a comforter, to comfort hearts and to comfort lives, oh God. And we thank you for just that great, awesome comfort that your Spirit sends and gives unto us. And so as we bless your name today, Lord God, we can celebrate who you are. Our spirits arise, Lord God. Our spirits arise and waken unto you, O God. And so we speak it to the north, the south, the east, and the west, O God. And we command your will to be done, Lord God. We command, Lord God, the working of your spirit to manifest itself in great and in mighty ways, O God. Hear our prayer today, Lord God. A prayer that is seasoned with thanksgiving and praise and giving you permission to have your way, O God. Have your way as we unite ourselves in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Give God a round of applause and we worship the Lord in Jesus' name. Sometimes we take God's 
uh, blessings and mercies for granted. Nothing becomes amazing to us. Folks are in the hospital today, can't catch their next breath because of disease, because of COVID. But yet it's a miracle that you and I can. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Yeah. 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 To God to be in all of what God has done. I celebrate those of you who are able to celebrate God's creation, that you can look at the coming of the day. You can see the, the dew on the grass and say, oh, God is great. God is awesome. God is marvelous. To recognize who God is and to celebrate who he is with the flowers in the earth, to celebrate God. Let's never lose that sense of awe. Sometimes life pushes us to always be busy in our schedules that we lose that sense of all. We can give a recognition to all that God is doing. We're going to ready ourselves for the preach word today as we come forward one time. We're, we're so privileged once more to have with us uh, Reverend David Tanner who is going to bring the word to us on today. And uh, we believe that the Lord has anointed the word and inspired him to proclaim we want you to preach to pray for the preacher today as he proclaims the word and we ready our hearts we ready our minds for what the lord has to say unto us we're believing for a right word this morning let's welcome reverend david tanner coming to share So I want to share this word with you on this morning. I'm going to go back into the cross 
See, because there, there's a message that somewhere was lost along the way what the cross really, what it really meant. See, because we see the cross as a, a, a as an object of worship. We come and we kneel down at the cross and we worship God. But if you would go back into the day of Christ, what the cross really meant, what it represented, it was a tool. It was a tool of torture. It was for, for breaking a criminal. If you had you committed a crime, they would put a cross upon your back. Yeah. It was meant to punish you. So we have to understand why, why this cross. So when Jesus calls those disciples, he asked them to take up their cross. Oh, and follow me. Yeah. Those, disciples, those disciples knew what they were getting into. They knew what they were getting into because they understood that day. They understood that when you were a cross was put up on your back, you just allowed to carry a load. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Right. Well, change people use that as a worship tool, and that's just fine. No, because I want to be found at the feet of the cross. I want to be found in a place of an attitude of yeah, yeah. worship all that. So because it's there that I draw strength. It's there yeah. that I draw power and I'm allowed to, to go on to, to the next thing. So Pastor Dale shared yesterday a concern in our praise the Lord, the P T L. When he first said that, I thought he was talking about his uh, Jim Baker's ministry. But, that, <laughs> you know, but I understood what the brother was actually saying. I, I'm going to cover just a couple of things. I got a couple of items on for this morning also. Because we're going to look at the PPP. Mm. Right. Not, the P, not the PPE. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to look at the PPE. Mm. And why it's just so important to Jesus in the ministry of Christ. And why he gave these disciples some things to do. See, because Jesus himself had to be reset. Right. There was a time when he got worried. There was a time when he got frustrated. And he had to go back there to get into a place there to get by himself. Yeah. And make the connection with God. And also in his resetting, he also encouraged those disciples. Yeah. To reset. So I want you to grab your Bible with you or your handheld devices on this morning and come with me to a passage of scripture according to Luke. Mm -hmm. Luke the 27th, 22nd chapter. Luke, the 22nd chapter, and I want to read from verse 37 to 46. When you get there, just say amen, because I want to keep moving on for, I think I'll get in a little bit to 45 minutes. An hour. An hour. I'm going to start reading at verse 37. Powerful passage of the scripture, and if we just, I'm taking on the point of reset, he says, For I say to you that this which is, it must be accomplished in me. And he was numbered with transgression. For the things concerning me have an end. So they said, Lord, look, here are two swords. And he said, it is enough. He went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed, and his disciples followed him. When he came to the place, he said unto them, pray that you may not enter temptation. Yeah. Verse 41 says, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, it is your will. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And I'm going to go one more phrase from this. And then an angel appeared to him from heaven Stripping him and being in the Lord, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. And I want to stop right there and look at the life of Jesus as he reset, as he refocused, as he carried out. Because Jesus knew all the time that what his mission seen was, he had came for the die for the remission of man's yeah. sin, yeah. to reconcile, to be the bridge that the pastor talked about yesterday, to be the bridge in between. Man and God. And see, that's what we got to get to on this morning. That's what we got to totally yeah. understand. Even Christ himself had a moment where he had to stop and breathe or exhale. So what we saw up in this coronavirus thing, yes, there's a moment, moment when it was stuck. That, that, that was a moment when we got shot. But all we need is a moment to, to just stop and do what the scripture said. Jesus told his disciples, he didn't tell his disciples right here. He told them one thing right here. Stop and pray. At <laughs> least you become tempted. And I believe that's what the body of Christ was. My whole message, my antidote this morning is PPE. Pray, people, pray. That's what we need to do right now in this hour, in this, this time of pandemic, because a lot of us.
people see something coming off, they keep trying to scare us about this delta variant of this COVID is coming out. But what about Christ? All right. What about Christ on this morning? We see this new, you know, we see this new strand that's coming out. But I knew one that was so powerful that, that the scriptures said that the scribes and the Pharisees, they looked at it one day and they said, look! The whole world is going after him. He moves in a power to the in, in a dark day. Blind eyes to be able to see when he comes in the time. The lame walk. The mute talk. If we left away from that on this morning, body of Christ, if we left away from that, then we left away from the true preaching of the gospel of Jesus. Yeah. 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 We've left away from the Pentecostal preaching of the gospel of Jesus. He heals the sick, he read and resurrects the dead. Yes, there are some things that we need to be aware of in the earth. Yes, there are some things we usually need to use wisdom when we go into the places, into the market. But yet, I know that my Redeemer, he lived it. I know that my redeemer, he didn't bring me this fall. That's right. That's right. To wipe me out. Thank you. COVID 19. So just an opportunity on this morning to reset. An opportunity to refocus. I got a few things that I wrote down this morning. It kind of didn't start the way I needed it to start this morning. But glory be to God, I'm just a bomb man. I'm just a person who shows up. Show up for ballet. I don't need a perfect situation because I've never had a perfect situation in my life. But I've learned to match and carry on. It's for Christ that we live on this world. It's for Christ that we die on this No matter how it comes, the how it goes. I know who my Redeemer is. Body of Christ, church of the living God, reset, refocus on Jesus and the belief that he is the author. Yeah. And the finish there about faith. Hallelujah. He'll be there when it's in the end. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Glory be to God. I'm going to get the breakfast in this house. Yeah. We're going to have a praise ceremony going on this morning. We're going to have a singing ceremony yeah. going on this morning. Yeah. My, God. Yeah. My God. Please understand me on this morning. Yeah. Yeah. If we, I reset it as I be focused on some things on this morning because myself, I was affected on this pandemic. I was affected. was touched to be in it. There were situations that came. The storms of life came. Yes, Enemy sitting in like a flood. Yeah. But it was the Spirit of the Lord that raised up a standard. After that, I had done all I could do to stand. I stood upon God's word. Yeah. God, you promised me. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. you promised me. You gave me this. God yeah. had nothing else to stand on. The market closed down, y'all. Jobs shut down, y'all. I understand because mine shut down. Yeah. 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 But I love you with y'all with a lot of glory. Yeah. 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 A lot of people spent their money in the bank to come with that. Mine was the opposite. I went. Praise God. Praise God. And when I went in my account, it wasn't necessarily no supernatural miracle, but it was a miracle that God performed right before my very eyes. But all right, we can count it up. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. Yeah. We're yeah. Look what the money was sent out the dollars the morning when I started out with. Woo! I said, that's nothing for the Lord. Nothing yeah. for the Lord. Yeah. Faith, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. I think said, some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. He made yeah. a way. He made a way. And the one time that we told his name, that was nothing that was, that was missed. Right. We went out with nothing. Right. We had to go out Bills were paid. Paid in advance. Right. Glory be to God. And that's right. the time. The God that we serve in the midst of the pandemic. So I'm sure those that are in third world countries, when they look at the United States and they see us that's going through a pandemic, I wonder if those people really believe that we suffer. All right. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We got to lock up and be confounded in our houses that had air conditioning. We had to be locked down and put in our houses that had central heating. We sit in front of the television and our lazy boy recrying with the remote control up in our hands and we got 500 channels at our access. I'm wondering if those people looked at us and thought that we were suffering because we saw their pictures on TV before because they had epidemics before. We saw it in 
Ethiopian children that they were so poor and it appeared that they were stalking, and they were so skinny and their bellies were, were sticking way out. We saw those children. Yeah. We listened at the song. God, uh, what was, I forgot the song. Something helpful, helpful to children. Man. So the epidemic in the eight epidemic broke out of the other countries. Yeah, yeah. But COVID-19 done something different. Mm. Yes, indeed. Oh, God is like, oh, came to the United States and touched. Yes, Lord. Not just some point, but he touched your house. He touched yeah. your house. He yeah. touched yeah. people, oh, people oh, all the yeah. oh, yeah. You yeah. say, what is this thing? And I say, back to the cross, back to the cross, back to the cross. God, yeah. Lord, bring us sent us back to the cross. Yeah, there used to be yeah. a group, and I forgot the name. They said, if I could find my way back to that old cross, mm -hmm. I could find my way back home on this morning. Yeah. I could find my way back to a place of peace. Yeah. I could find my way back to a way uh, to a place of solitary. God, I need you to intervene more because I've been searching for something. But if I could just find the cross and kneel at the feet of Christ, yeah. Amen. Yeah. that's worth the symbolic of the cross. That's what it is to us today. That's yeah. what it means to me today. It's different. It's no longer a tool of punishment. Yeah. 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 Unmerited favor of God is there at the feet of the cross. I find yeah. grace, y'all. See, because I have not lived the perfect life. All right. But it was at the cross. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. See, because in this passage of scripture, Jesus is in it. Whether you know it or not, the things that were troubling him in his transgression, he was on his way to a mission, he was on his way to a cross. Yeah. It, was, it was called fulfillment. And during his, during his, on his, in his destination, on his way to that cross, he got, became weary. Mm -hmm. On his way to the destination of that cross, he became scared. Yeah, I'm But his ability to go into the garden of Gethsemane built him up that he might carry that mission out. Because you're going to see a little bit later, a little bit before in that same passage that Luke writes. As he had made his entrance into Jerusalem, how there were crowds and crowds of people out there. They were throwing coats in the head, yeah. palms to put up on the bridge, and they were singing, Hosanna to the Most High. All right. They was at a crescendo of high praise. Yes, yes. Yeah. This is the middle of the week, that was the beginning of the week. And by the end of the week, his disciples were witness the crucifixion. Yeah. Yeah. See, the same folks that was out there singing, Hosanna, be it to the highest. Mm -hmm. On that Sunday or that Monday, Jesus really could have used them on that Friday. That's right. When they knelt his hand to the cross, when he was hanging out there in a brutal Sunday, he had been brutally executed. Those same people, see, that was an opportunity there to witness. That was an opportunity to sit down and praise God. Glory unto the Most High. Not necessarily when he entered into Jerusalem, but when he met his destination, it was not pretty. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I present to you this morning that Christ is fine as ours. It was not when he made it. He, he, when, he, when he had miracles going on, when he raised Lazarus from the it was not as fine as ours. Christ is fine as ours was yes. the garden of Gethsemane. His fine as ours is when he said, Father, forgive them. Yeah. Yeah. And he hung there and he died. He hung there, he died for the mission of your sin. That we can have the right to come boldly before the throne of grace. Glory to God on this morning. Woo! Not ashamed anymore. I'm bold as I am. I can boldly to the throne of grace. Because when Christ hung there and died, it was fulfilled. It was done. When he said it was finished, it was finished. You devil, he'll fool you. He don't want you to finish, man. He attempted to stop him. Yeah. 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 He attempted to stop him with this fire. Yeah. They didn't want it together. Yeah. But the scripture told us, forsake them not to assemble ourselves, but these are the ways of in the last day. So therefore, we'll still assemble ourselves. Now we know ministry has changed. Yeah. We can no longer be comfortable. We can no longer become behind and be convenient behind the pulpit. But now we have to go out. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. We come to purchase little things where there's no audience, where there's no crowd. Mm. Mm. One on one basis. Mm. Yeah. That's the true test. Right. Yes, you gonna fall yes, in as well as you say, you gonna do what yeah. God told you to do. Yeah. Oh yeah. Are you gonna witness Christ? Are you gonna tell? Get religious. Is that why y'all folks just need to go to church? <laughs> I know y'all heard me. It's this, that, nothing. You just need to quit. All you just quit, quit, quit. I paid so many times, but when they quit, quit, quit. Come on. Come on. The they can go. Mm. All right. Yeah. I believe in prayer. Don't quit, quit, quit. I believe in personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Divine. Yeah. Something that's divine that's yeah. going to change you, man. I had a personal experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. I did not just go to church. I had been churched all my life, yo. I was raised yeah. in the church. Yeah. But yet yeah. I was not saved. I was not connected to the cross. All right. Mm. All right. All right. All right. There's a difference. Yeah. There's a yeah. difference between a church goal and the sanctity of the most high God. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, can, we can come real religious. We can become, become so caught up in the things where we know it's just the right thing to do. And it appears to be the right thing for me to do upon Sunday morning to get up and to put my suit on and go to church. Yeah. 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 Just like the old people you say concerning baptism. He <laughs> went down <laughs> as a dry devil. Yeah. I came up <laughs> as a weapon. Not really, not, 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 not much difference there. Not much difference there. Yeah. Amen. But change. That's right. Change. I don't know where you had in your life before, but I feel change in your life. That's right. Amen. I don't want to be just a person that's just caught up in a subject where you can see us up on Facebook or you can see us up on the TV, right. but you need to be able to take a magnifying glass if you have to so that you might believe and look into my life. Scripture tells us we'll tell the truth by truth, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of times I, I don't look into people's life that close and just look at my tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if it's an apple tree, and if the orange is growing on that apple tree, all that is wrong. It's like going to a ginger, what do you call it nowadays, the, the ginger reveal party. I was just going to talk about it at work the other day. <laughs> and it says, the girl is, it blows pink smoke. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they said, if it's a boy, it blows, what kind of it blows? Blue. 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 Blue smoke. Yes, yeah. indeed. So somebody asked the question, well, what if oh my God. it blows white smoke? Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. It's really too early for that. Yeah. It's really yeah. that child likes it. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. But God presents us with an opportunity to teach, to minister, and give direction. That's right, yes. Give direction to those that are confused on this journey. Yes, indeed. It's not just in the world that we look to confusion and as I just kept thinking it wasn't for the world as we reset. See, because something, if you never had something, how could you be reset? That's right, that's right. To the church. Yeah, yeah. To the beliefs. Uh -huh. Oh, we got to do some of that issue. I don't care. 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 Still unable to crucify the flesh. 
This is a big one. I, I, I looked at that scripture several times because in that passage, the 22nd time, it's 22nd chapter, over three times, mm -hmm. Jesus told his disciples to pray. Yeah. He gave you a specific little one to pray that you may not enter temptation. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Pray. We know the temptation is there. I can, I can start off in the meantime to tell you the temptations. We know they're there. Yeah. yeah. We pray. Yeah. Bring that your eyes away and see what God sees a little bit in the middle. Yeah, in certain services, say there, we, we, we have to uh, deal with different things. We have to fight off different demonic spirits. Yeah. Yeah. Of that your eyes may see. But I, I always go back to the nursery rhymes and something I learned a long time ago. Miss D. C. L. used to teach up back there in the boat. And she used to say, be careful, little eyes, what you see. All right. Yeah. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful this day of who and where you entertain your ears to. Yeah. Because it enters into your mind. Once it enters into your mind, it goes into your soul, and you're going to bring it home. All right. You're going to bring it in now your household is messed up. There's some things that have been released in your house. See, if the weapons of our warfare are not corner, they're mighty through God into the pulling down the stronghold. And when we learn how to, to use these small tools that God has already given us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we might have forgot during the pandemic. There were some things that we might have just let go for a little while. There were some times since we went and we maybe didn't get to come and get your praise on. Maybe you didn't come and get your prayer on. But God has called you to pray in your household. Yeah. Pray without ceasing. Yeah. That's yeah. the place you need to be. Yeah. Praying with anyway. Yeah. Get up in there and put Anointed music, yeah. some Diane McClurk, or uh, you're, uh, yeah. you're the only, you're the true and living God. You're the only living God. Yeah. And begin to say prayers in that house. You might be doing your laundry or a vacuum cleaning your yeah. flow, but get in there and begin to pray and exalt the name of the Lord yeah. and invite him into your yeah. sanctuary. Yeah. See what's wrong coming to the sanctuary here? Yeah. 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 But God, come in and enter my sanctuary. That's right. That's right. Yeah. This is where I need you the most. This is where no one can see me. I'm hidden from the presence of the saints. This is what finds out. Yeah. Yeah. But I put all those things aside. See, because you can't say, not just me. Mm -hmm. Not just me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I said that. I, mean, I wanted to spend my life mending broken people. So this is a way for me to reach out in the, to spend my life mending broken people, seeing lives being changed, seeing yeah. souls being saved yeah. for the yeah. kingdom of God. Yeah. 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 And so I get up and I come out and I, I witness, I bear witness of what I call the truth of God. But it has to be a change. That's the things that I have to. And notice I said me, I ain't gonna talk about you right now. I ain't talking about you at all this morning. That me, I had to put away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Yeah. That's the point of that change in that reset. Was once bound and bombarded by some things like bound and bombarded by alcohol. Lord, just uh, years ago, since probably about the age of 13. So there was something that had to be present to fill that void. Uh -huh. See, when you get say people want to call you extremists, then. Well, you can, can't make sure it's not. You go talk to him. All you want to talk about is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus and Jesus. Yeah. 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 You know, but I love to talk, you know, see, because you weren't there. And that's right. the you weren't there when the Lord said. That's see, right. There was times in my life when my back was against the wall. And I was yeah. destined for a devil. Mm -hmm. Couldn't count on you because you were going to push your little fast. <laughs> But late in the midnight hour, one night I called upon the name of Jesus. One night I surrendered. I gave it all to God. God, if there would be anything. Yeah. I went to the court just as, as Jesus. I, would, if, I would, didn't say if there would be any other way. Because mm -hmm. right. I didn't mind doing what I do nowadays. That's right. Share with the young men. Take time out now, man. Yeah. 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 Be an example at work. Yeah. The toughest place to be an example at, but I'll be an example at work. All right. Yeah. Praise God. Be a leader at work. Yeah. Because I know who I represent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That should be enough to change 
right there when you know who you represent. So yeah. when you're in the marketplace, you carry yourself a certain type of way. Yeah. 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 When people can see you, your life being lived out. And that there's a scripture that he testifies with that because we are to be walking of pistols. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That they right. might be seen by men. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, that they might see our good works yeah. and glorify yeah. our yeah. Father that's in heaven. Yeah. Lord, that's a powerful statement right oh, there. Oh, yeah. A walking pistol. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to close right now. I just, but I'm so glad I had a chance to. Come out and share with you on this morning, and that you would get excited about a moment to reset and to refocus. Yeah. Because that's the time in our life and everything we need to refocus on. Some of us need to refocus. Yeah. I had to learn this uh, quite some time ago on focus, refocus on our marriages on this morning. Mm -hmm. See, because we stayed so excited about the wedding. <laughs> but when the wedding became a marriage, at some point it changed. See, because the glamorous and the beauty of the wedding, there was a clashing of the symbols and everything was just so pretty. You wanted to, to be with them. You got to that altar. You said, it's no way I'm leaving without this sister law. All right. Yeah. But when the course changed and you got home and after some months that went by, maybe even some years, we left the realm of the wedding. You came to the realization I'm married. I'm married for to this woman. So that's the thing I could have walked away from before the wedding ceremony. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. But God is married now, so I need to find a way to deal with this. <laughs> so, God, I trust you that you're going to supernaturally intervene come into this marriage. God, if it's me, God, change me. Yeah. 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 Lord, let me look through a new pair of glasses. See, because I understood the scripture, it says what it's called. So the man leaves his brother and his father and cleave to himself a wife. And now I have a wife, God, that we've been through the process of the wedding. Mm -hmm. Though I might not agree. Might even hurt my pride a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I'm married. <laughs> I'm married, I'm married, I'm married. And that's where we had to be this. This walk with Christ up on this yeah. morning. We're married to the Lord Jesus Christ. The wedding party is over. So in this day, see, in the early stages, it might have been high praise in the early stages of the relationship. Or you might have just seen me jump for joy. Maybe we just jump over church coming in and in praise. But now the, the wedding is over and I'm married to the Lord Jesus Christ. I have a relationship, whether it's good, the bad, or the ugly, whether it's good times, hard times, the bad times. God, I promise you that I'm going to the world. I share this good news. Yeah. Yeah. I share good news. Yeah. God, I will be a living testament. I will be an example in the marketplace of your love, your kindness, and that way of life. My God, I want you to be reset up on this morning, New Life Church of God. I want us to start beginning to just tear down strongholds and make the spiritual realm to where we're dispatched, that we're going to the to the local communities, we'll go out into the schools, we'll hit North Central, we'll hit Parallel Elementary, we'll hit Melville, and we'll go in with full of fire, full of the word of God, that we might be an example of the goodness of God. So Father, I thank you this day. I thank you for your loving kindness. I thank you that you're good all the time. I thank you for this week on this morning, God, that you that you manifested a new anointing in this area, God, that, that, that we will be reset and that we will be refocused. There's time, God, when we got a little bit weary upon the job. But you allow the global pandemic to come in and reset us. To refocus that we would have our eyes stay upon Jesus. Not stay upon CNN. Not staying upon CBS. Not staying upon 515, God, but my eyes are stayed upon you this morning. God, because you promised me in this thing, you promised me early on in your word that you would never leave me and that you would never forsake me. So, God, I trust you this morning. Stand to your feet. We move like never before, God. I accept you would change lives on this morning. God, change your heart. There are men this morning. Father God, this heart have grown hard through this 
through this pandemic, God. I ask that you would quicken their hearts on this morning, Lord. I ask that you would enter into minds and change their minds, Father God, and give them directions because there are even some that came that meant harm. God, but I know this morning, according to Romans 8, 28, that you're working it for my good. God, there's things that we are lost on this when I was entrusting you. But I say, I'm sure hell noticed this morning that he has to repay. Yeah, yeah. And I want it back seven times. Everything that you attempted to take, everything that you stole from it, I want it back on this morning. Yeah, yeah. So we thank you, God, that you're bringing us right now in the name of Jesus of Nazareth to higher heights. Yeah. And we might know the hopes, the hopes of this high calling, God, yeah. that, you, that you're shaping us, that you're molding us. Be the people that you call us to be. We won't sit back and mummer or complain, God. We're ready. We're ready. Just like in previous chapter, Peter, and Jesus had to show, talk to Peter, and uh, Peter said, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready to go with you. I'm even ready to die with you. And Jesus spoke to Peter that day and told him, before the rooster caught, Three times that you went to die. So I pray this morning. That's where your faith is on this one. And I'm ready regardless. Yeah. We go regardless where this ministry takes. Yeah. Regardless there are yeah, hard times in. God, I can't quit right now. I'm in too far. I'm too deep. We won't quit on you this morning, Lord. God, I ask that you would anoint us of fresh in the blood. God, I ask that you continue to cleanse us, purge us, God, and use us for your will and your glory, Father God, that we might be living sacrifice unto the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we realize that it's not by might. Lord, we realize that this pandemic won't be over with by power, but by the spirit of the living God. So this day we send healing unto the community of Palmetto. This day we send healing to the community of the boat. This day we send healing. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus on this morning. Just begin to worship as the sister plays on North Division. We have a time to reset this morning. I'm not going to tell you that God's about to do a new thing, but he's doing something different. And you have an opportunity this morning. That's what the pastor drilled on yesterday. We have an opportunity on this morning. So do you go back and you sit on the bench? Or do you put on your big boy tennis? I like it when they say put on your big boy pants. Put on your big boy pants. Rise up and be the man that God called you to be. See, because we're real quick. Especially when things come into home. I'm a man and nobody going to disrespect this man because I'm the king of this camp. It's my heart. No, I need you to put on your big, pants, big boy pants and become the man of God that God called you to be. And sometimes that's called you have to be meek. There are times when you have to be humble. There's time when retaliation. I wanted retaliation. I wanted, I wanted revenge. I wanted revenge. But when I got laid off and lost my job, man, that hurt me so bad. And I wanted the revenge. I wanted revenge. Because I can see that, that, that in the old days from the south when them boys talking about, I want that quarter blood. You done done me wrong. Now you got to pay. Thank God this morning. And he's supernaturally intervened in my life. And, you know, I don't even think of those things, but I don't go that way. I love to forgive. That's a powerful statement right there. Y'all, some of y'all just don't know. But some of y'all who've never been in situations, some of y'all that never been a little bit hot-headed, some of y'all that really didn't take no mess off of somebody, you really know what I'm talking about. When God turned you around, he turned you around. See, because things that people wait, get away with nowadays, 25 years ago, that wouldn't have happened. It would have been some bloodshed. It wouldn't have been necessarily the bloodshed with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Lord, I thank you this morning that you're such a good God. I praise you this morning as our people have gathered in the symbol of God. I pray that this word would go up there. It would touch lives. They would leave and go tell the world. Now, I've been reset on this morning. And I've been refocused. I'm going to read one scripture with you, and I'm going home. I'm going to let you go. Actually, I'm going to 
pray God a lot. Have a problem that God's working out. I'm about blind nowadays. He said, it's real difficult for some things. I really just can't see what I want to see. But God's working that out. I think what's it? got to do tomorrow. I can pray. Yes, thank God. We got to do what we got to do. Got a couple of scriptures I need to get through on this morning, but if you have a chance to you get your Bibles on this morning, just go back to Hebrews, the fourth chapter, the 12th verse, and it says, it talks about the Word of God, and I remember a pastor teaching the other night, uh, don't want to disagree with him, but, you know, we talked about the, 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 the division of the, or how the spirit is separated from the soul, and the brother had shared with us concerning that the soul would go up to me, God, and I just, I, I wrestled with that, I wrestled with that because of occurring to Tony, my studies, I don't believe that because I know when I perform ceremonies, funeral ceremonies, we teach concerning the soul and it was going to go back from which it came. So that's why we use the ashes to ashes and the dust to dust. You know, and, and so something, but I want you to go back and study that scripture concerning the Hebrews because it talks about the word of God and how it's able to separate and divide the spirit from the soul. The Hebrews, the fourth chapter says, for the word of God is quick and is powerful, sharpening in any two-headed sword, piercing even and dividing the assumption of the soul and the spirit and for the joints and the marrow. You know, so we just really got to look at the word of God and, you know, I don't, we don't want to talk right now. I'm fighting upon the battleground. I want to be on this side. So I'm not talking things that are pathetic, but watch what ministries you get into and what you give God. Amen. Uh, you know, I, you know I, don't, I don't want to say much, but that's kind of different with me on this morning. And I, there's some theology and there's some practices, some messages. I you listen to some guys on social media bro concerning this time here man I, I couldn't agree with them I couldn't follow up on, up on anything because that's not what my Bible taught me my Bible has taught me it said the first time was by water but it said the next time would be by so I just called them brothers in there I had nothing to say with them uh, didn't say amen no hallelujah or anything else I just kept my mind shut you know and we as the saints of God we just need to prepare for some things you know uh, we perish for the lack of knowledge, but yet if you have a word to share with somebody in person in season that's going to encourage you while we're here on this earth. I know that's the scripture that I was just talking about. That's way off over y'all. But in this present day, God says he's a present help. And we are to be examples of Christ who was created in his image and his likeness. So you have to gain the wisdom of God as you study the word of God, as you come and sit up under this New Life Church of God ministry. Or the MRC, you have opportunity because you learn so much. Amen. Can't just say you sit in here and learn nothing. So I encourage you on your job just to share the truth. We have people there on our job that are dealing with things and have wrestling with deception and all kind of mess, y'all. If it's a blue state or a red state or, or, you know, man, I'm in my state of mind is staying on Jesus. <laughs> I'm not going to let you get me caught up in that on day, see, because that leads to some other things. Working up in the city, up in, in North Louisiana, I knew that was about to get me caught up in all kind of mess. And I had to use that word right there, because I knew where they stood. Uh -huh. And I know they talk to you any kind of way, but say any old thing. So I use wisdom, trust God, and I got a phone out about it. So may God bless you, may God keep you. I want to pray one more time. I'm asking the pastor to come up. God, I thank you for this assembly on this morning. I thank you for this group of people that you've assembled here in Pamela, Louisiana. God, I pray that their lives have been reset, refocused, and changed. God, I pray that if there's anyone that's among us on this morning who has not yet met the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, God, that you would make a way right now, that that event, event individual would stop me, that it would stop the pastor, uh, if he would be bold enough to come to the cross on this morning. We'll receive you, not up in the church, But we'll receive your testimony as you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your person to say. So God, I thank you. Those that need to come to repentance, only repentance is here on this morning. Come to the cross. If you can find your way to the cross on this morning, I'm sure that you can find your way back home. So God, I thank you this day. I give you praise. I give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth. Let the saints of God give us a high crescendo and say amen. Glory be to God. Glory. 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 We made it through camp meeting in 2021. Some say we weren't going to make it to this form. Some didn't believe that we were going to make it. And it's not just about the camp meeting, but it's about the test.
that we need uh, to move forward and to be effective in this life and to recognize who we are in Christ Jesus and uh, we can live to his glory. Yeah. What's more, we extend uh, not just the warmth of welcome to everyone, but uh, the recognition that we are on assignment and we live this week on assignment and uh, our power stems from uh, what we find in the cross of Jesus Christ and the significance that's there. We greet everyone today. We thank the Lord for those that are gathered today. We praise the Lord for uh, some of uh, Reverend David's uh, family that's here. And uh, we greet them. It's just so that to be. And, uh, we, you guys just find yourselves back home. You moved away, but you find yourselves back home. Thanks Glory. be to God. So glad for your presence here on today. We're going to move forward and um, anticipate blessings on this week. As we have been fed richly, uh, we have been reset and refocused, Amen. and uh, we're going to be ready for this week. It's going to be a week where we see the Spirit of God work in great and mighty ways indeed, and we thank you for that. Sure. So thank you for your presence. I want to thank those who are online. Again, if uh, there are special prayer concerns and requests or special decisions for Christ that have been made, let us know. Inbox us, message us, and uh, we'll be praying for you. And I uh, believe that the Lord will strengthen you in your life where you serve. And so may the Lord bless you indeed. As we ready ourselves, we are the body of Christ. We thank you for your continual support uh, of the body of Christ to work and minister. I want to thank those of you who supported even our camp meeting this year. Many of you registered. There were offerings that were given. Uh, thank you. We kind of had to maneuver and work our way through even the meal situations. It was a new day for us, but I thank, thank you for just the warmness of spirits and understanding uh, as we work together for the kingdom of God Amen. And, uh, so that the church could be built up and, uh, and edified. So thank you again for your financial support. Again, our offering receptacle is on the back. As you worship the Lord, you may give and place your, uh, your best offering. I want to thank those of you who are supporting our scholarship fund. Uh, we are over $2,500 towards our goal of $3,500 for uh, our college students. And so we just ask that you continue to give sacrificially as we sow into the lives of those students who are continuing their preparations. So may the Lord bless you. We'll be right back here on Sunday. We'll pick up once more with our Wednesday evening sessions uh, as we move through this coming week. And uh, we'll give thanks and praise unto the Lord for all that he has done. Amen. 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 Let's stand together. Our ushers will dismiss us one row at a time Glory after God. our benediction. Again, we still want to maintain those protocols that will help us to uh, remain safe as best we can. Uh, let's keep praying for one another and we're willing to for the very best. Father, we give you thanks and praise for today. Thank you for our coming together. Thank you for the word, Lord God, that was proclaimed with authority today. As we reset and focus our lives, we recognize that it all starts from the cross of Christ. We accept that. We receive that. We move in power and authority. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you as you move through this week. Good afternoon.